Hello and welcome to another edition of Ashley Hayden's Political Breakdown. We're going to start with some good news uh, this week. Pete's back, which means the sound isn't going to be horse shit. Um, if you do not know about the show, uh, it's basically a weekly show where me and between one and two guests uh, <laughs> talk about the week's news. It's very, it's, it's, it is what it is, you know. Um, so uh, this week my guests are... James Harris, hello. And uh, Matt Jewell, hi. Fantastic. Now, who has a story to start with? Um, I guess the big story this week is uh, The Little Mermaid. Uh, there has been a, a non-white person cast as The Little Mermaid, and everybody is very, very angry about that. So oh, I'm not, Matt. I Are you not? <laughs> <laughs> I've controlled my fury until now, but now you've put it out like that. Well, what we've just heard there, which I, I mean, I don't think the mics have picked up anything from outside, but they may have just picked up the plane that's just flown past at quite a speed. Yeah. It's so probably the first strike in the Little God, Mermaid God conference. is angry yeah, at the if, idea. If there's a big explosion now, this is for tape. Everyone's going to be watching in 50 years. You know what I mean? But no. who, can I get, who, who specifically is, who, who is angry? I Let's don't have, know. I, I be, mean, be, just be, general well, I think, anger. I think like ever, the, the press has like re preempted the backlash, mm. which has been, resulted in a backlash well no i think i think the backlash as uh, every piece of backlash has happened uh since like 2009 the backlash has come online yes which means it isn't real no no absolutely it's not it's not like people are marching down the street or i mean the I mean? stuff or that they're saying oh i remember in my childhood this mermaid should be white like it's a mermaid <laughs> you fucking knobber um, people are trying to do scientific things like, well i mean where are they getting the uh, mental in from because they're they're <laughs> under thing i mean are you, are you are you expecting us to believe that mermaids are not just white fuck off mate and also and also let's be honest i live in scotland right we, little mermaid the original disney one she what is that that that's a myth that is a ginger person with a tan <laughs> like she doesn't have it you know it's well i mean this, the story comes originally from something else this isn't one of the their it's main it sounds christian anderson isn't it yeah because there's the little mermaid statue is in copenhagen and yeah. it's bronze which is even more offensive <laughs> <laughs> How dare they? Yeah, I hate finishing okay. third. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, but with all, of, <laughs> with all of his stories, the actual story is going to be a hell of a lot darker. Well, she commits suicide. She kills herself. Yeah, I can't remember why, but it's something to do... Yeah, she... she Maybe she saw Twitter. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, she saw, she saw what was I going on. She saw Twitter and went, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Or Drowns herself. Yeah, or just... Or just like going up. Yeah, or just didn't want to be in a happy meal. Do you know the what fish, I mean? The fish... If if a, if you put a fish out of water mm. and it dies, does it suffocate or does it drown? I or is drowned solely with water? What, what a great question. I mean, if only you'd brought some experts in who would know. James, do you know? It's, it's difficult to have strong opinions about myths, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> haven't... It's hard to get... Yeah, but I the, haven't given you a myth there. I've given you an actual question. An yeah, actual yeah. question. Do, do, do I'm do sorry, I'm still thinking about the mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, do fish drown or... Do um, fish, can, I, can I, I, fish I, I, drown. I think they suffocate, don't they? Do they um, suffocate? Yeah, they c and they can do. They, they can do, yeah. I mean... Okay. Well, there's very little you can say to them in that situation. Oh, I, I, think well. I, I truly think that's enough of that story. Um, yeah. You got one? Yeah, I have. And um, one of the things which, which struck me this week was our new delegates to the European Parliament. Uh. We've, sent, we've sent quite a, quite a team. Oh, not, 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 just, uh, not just the Brexit party, but also the, the Liberal Democrats with their Stop Brexit fetching uh, yellow T-shirts. Brexit and, is and, bollocks. And then the... Um, Turning the back to uh, to the ode to joy being played by some children, yeah. <laughs> which is one of the most noble protests in history, <laughs> surely, isn't it? <laughs> Standing up against a child playing the oboe <laughs> it's, a, it's a liberation <laughs> movement, if ever I saw one. I mean, uh, that was quite something, I thought. It's when someone like Widdicombe, who is a fucking snake in wolf's clothing... Mm is talking, doing a, a speech in the European Union comparing the British people 
to slaves, yeah. you start to yeah. question whether we deserve life at all. But you you have to mm. wonder, once you've, like it's her second day and she's already got to the slave thing. Yeah. So where does she go? She's really yeah. going to have to it's, start. It's like, like when you're a teacher and yeah. you shout on the first day. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. You know, like the first thing you do, you're already, you've already blown, you've blown your load. Do you know exactly. What I mean? like, where, where, how can you yeah. top that yeah. in, in terms in, of in like... In two weeks time, we're slaves. It's like yeah. we've heard that before. Yeah, we've, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the slave. only thing you can go to above slaves really is kind of genocide isn't it so they'll literally have to have less brexit no party what, MEPs what every she's week. going to do is she's going to come uh dressed as a slave next time <laughs> right okay fully blacked up <laughs> naked apart from a loincloth yeah. in chains and just say this is what you're doing to us yeah, yeah. and everyone's going to be violently ill yeah and because it's for you they'll give a free house I mean, they'll give, they'll give her some benefits. They'll give, they'll give her a head start. I mean, like, that's that's <laughs> they'll subsidise her loincloth. Yeah, she'll, she'll yeah. be very angry about that. She'll be like, I can't believe you've helped me out here. Yeah, yeah you I'd use a <laughs> fancy dress in Poria. <laughs> <laughs> tax taxpayer funded. I, I just <laughs> get a nice little house in Munich. Yeah. <laughs> the selection of people that we've sent over there is, quite is nice. uh, disgusting. The only good thing is the fact that they're not going to be there off them. Can I just say though? There was a, there was a discussion on Twitter, which, as we oh, have good, established, good. is very well. But is it, you know, the Lib Dems went with their ori- their yellow T-shirts, yes. and basically, uh, is it isn't it just all equivalent? Because I saw a lot of people who were kind of like the Lib Dems, yay, oh, and the Brexit part. But basically, we have exported our own national crisis and stuck it in the middle of the European yeah. Parliament. Isn't it all fairly kind I mean, of? I mean, I would, I, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I would first say. off argue that. Uh, a debate on Twitter is a lot like a fucking bridge made of Play-Doh. Yeah. Um, sure, no, it absolutely. looks like a bridge, but you wouldn't necessarily walk on it, you know? No, That's the same with a debate on Twitter. It looks like a debate, but it's not really. It's I, not I, I, a debate. I don't think it does. I, I took debate classes at I, I took debate classes at school. Do you know what I mean? I don't remember. What type of like school did you go to? Where you had a fucking debate team. Uh, one with hardworking teachers. I don't know if you've heard of them, but uh, but um, uh, it was a state school fucking that did really debate well. Debate school. All right, fucking all right, mate. Shit all right. I, I actually came from a, an area that looks oh, worse. Oh, here, here we go. That looks oh, worse. I'm, much, I'm actually working. Yeah, fuck off, mate. Oh come on, you fucking debate class. Bollocks. If you don't know where we start are, we, with, we're, start we're, with we're in a and then go on to your fucking <laughs> middle class upbringing. That I was didn't actually come, really quite rough. You know, I'm not the one had, who lives in had, behind a gate. <laughs> I live behind a gate because I don't like people. If I was able to live on a fucking island, I would do. You do. But I can't. <laughs> you do. Um, uh, England isn't uh, uh, United Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I, I live in Scotland, so you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of. Oh, you've I, mentioned I, that twice now. I sp- well, I do. I, I spend my whole time in 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 Scotland saying the word Britain and then not being sure if I've said the right thing. I mean, because I'm saying we're British. Well, geographically, you Ge- are correct. Well, yeah, yes. geographically, I'm yeah. correct. Uh, sort yeah. of morally, I'm very not correct. But but I mean, all I'm saying, a debate class, I never got taught the debating I see now. You know what I mean? If someone makes a valid point, just call them a cuck. Uh, have, you like s- have you seen um, Have you seen uh, Blue Planet when the the kind of big sea lions have the fights on the beach? Oh yeah, that's kind of like Twitter debate, isn't it? It's just giant, fat, heavy things striking against each other to no real effect. I just don't think you should debate anywhere where you can do an emoji. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that that is that was my New Year's resolution this year. Don't debate anywhere where someone can do a fucking winky face at you. Or 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 a gif from Joey from Friends or something. Oh. Going, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I think some subsidy is good for or, the lower or should, or should, yeah. <laughs> We just have to uh, understand in this day and age that the height of uh, wit is considered to be something that is literally spelled but, but me me. I, I yeah, have to yeah, say, yeah. getting back to the Brexit party, any piece. Yeah. There was this kind of really sad moment where this kind of liberal Democrat guy had to make his real sp- his his speech, and he said, "You know, the fact that we're here shows that public opinion is changing." Yeah, and then they shot back to the Brexit party, and there's just this <laughs> row of cunts going, <laughs> back and, and it's just like, "Oh God, we've just sent like our worst people." To Should they be taking the money? No. No, no, if they got any morality, no. Well, no, it, 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 I mean, I mean, does do Sinn Fein take for money? No, right, okay. So they, if, if they're going don't. down the Sinn Fein route of not yeah. taking their seats, they should not take. The well, money. they've definitely taken their oh, seats. Oh yeah, okay. Yes. Well, Nigel Farage just spent his entire life just having having. Uh, my, my my friend, he's um, 
he, he's uh, a civil servant uh, and um, up, up in Nottingham, and he says, like all the UKIP and uh, Brexit Party type people, they just come in, clock in, and then as one, they just go straight out to like the cafe over the road and have croissants, and, yeah. and it's a nice shop. And, I couldn't uh, imagine that. Do you know what I mean? And then they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're not against the lifestyle. They quite enjoy the lifestyle, and, and they, they, they kind of enjoy the fact when all the other politicians finish their work and come out, and, and they sort of... You know, they sort of socialise with them, so they're not against the life of Westminster or Brussels, but they're against the idea of doing the work. You know, well, which is which is, is something it. I agree. Yeah, I'm on board with. If you're like a call centre operator, do you know what I mean? You know, I'm, I'm certainly. Well, I mean, I'm on board with it. If I was still a fucking teenager, yes, exactly, yes. Yeah. And then you'd go, oh, well, I have to, I have to get up. At, yeah. at, at <laughs> this, are you are you mental? Can I just not sit on my ass? wank and get paid for it and then complain about how difficult life is yeah. write myself some emo poems because yeah. i've realized that love and above rhyme what well, one of them was tweeting they'd got to the parliament in strasbourg yeah. and about one hour later they tweeted something like everything i've seen so far has confirmed my view that this place is undemocratic what, a like, plug socket. what, <laughs> what has happened in that hour which is such a massively uh, excuse me would you like a coffee mate uh, the seats are oh fucking hell this place <laughs> tyranny tyranny and also, and also they were like stood the other way so what <laughs> yeah. we've seen is like not a, even looking. a broken but plug socket on the try floor looking in the right direction <laughs> before you make your complaint I saw, I saw the charger for the ambassador of luxembourg <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, that was not his own. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just madness. The idea that, uh, I mean, this is completely undemocratic. How did you get in? Yeah. People voted for me. Yeah. What were you doing today? Voting on some things. Okay, then. But apart from that, you're quite right. I, I, it's, it's democratic. Of course it's democratic. But I, I take your point with the Liberal Democrats. Is that not both sides of the same I, th- I think no, it is. Liberal I think Democrats, it is. The left are able... And Lib Dems aren't necessarily the left. Centre-left, shall we say. Yeah. But the left manages to always find the worst way of doing anything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, they manage it's to convince nobody impressive. else. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, like yeah. no, no one, no one's going to look at the Lib Dems and go, do you know what? Good point. I would Brexit gone, is yeah. rubbish. I would have gone with a badge if I was a Lib Dems. Yeah, a, a badge yeah. is We're a the badge. right level. Yeah, absolutely. Going, uh, uh, Brexit yeah. is bollocks yeah. or stop Brexit, yeah. something like that. A badge, absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. Going in, uh, fucking with or balloons. Bright. I mean, balloons would have been yeah, fine. Yeah, they'll leave them in the ch- <laughs> ninety nine. Bright yellow fucking yeah. uh, uh, t-shirts t-shirts as well you're in parliament yeah, no, but also have a have a bit of decorum also about, it's, yeah. for, it's for lib dems isn't it so it's just you know they're just going to be like i just imagine that whatsapp group they must have been so excited before arranging those latest like, like, <laughs> yeah, oh my god we're gonna, we're gonna do, it right. uh, do we have the money to be able to get all of these t-shirts uh, <laughs> i mean the sizing looked all right i mean they're, they're, you know there's a comp a level well, you of can tell when some, somebody's had that like all right all right right this is the last call get your sizes in or you get in a medium yeah. you know what I mean alright yes. and we're going with yellow we're going with yellow and we're going with big right and we're all Dave Dave we're all wearing them we're all wearing <laughs> them all of us oh, just not like last time <laughs> just one of them coming in with a Metallica t-shirt instead <laughs> so I, I didn't I didn't I didn't have my unfortunately <laughs> I got it stained so now I'm just wearing the one that I, I had with me well um, I, I think I think I think sort of like death metal kind of slogans would be a bit passe now do you know what I mean like like f- fuck the angels oh yeah b- boring <laughs> we've moved beyond that kind of insult on with Whittacombe's, uh EU slave speech that was vile and this woman is just fucking disgusting. I've, I've, I've met her, you know, Whittacombe. I bet she was an absolute. Delight. She was. She, she was. She was fine, but I mean, she's just. She's just lost it, hasn't she? I mean, they've all. She lost they've it all, at the they've start. All just, uh, yeah, she was never someone. She was not a good person. She's never been a good person. No, but she might have been a. Well, I think I could imagine a scenario moral. where you would have showed a Anne Whittacombe picture of her basically off her fucking face on crazy ideology ranting in the european parliament you showed it to anne widdicombe herself 20 years ago and she would have gone uh that's fucking weird i wouldn't trip that woman down the stairs i think i think i i, I don't think she's like respected even in the brexit party do you know what i mean like she's coming down i don't the think old, she's respected by the other voices in her fucking head yeah just like, <laughs> oh here, here comes anne <laughs> everybody get ready well, she's kind of like the she's kind of the big star in there you yeah, know, yeah, she? I know, yeah. She was brought she's in like the people have heard keith, of her the yeah. keith richards to nigel farage i can imagine it being like david, oh, david brent God. david brent or something like cracking the jokes do you know what i mean like hey are we doing guys and would come is what happens when you've never orgasmed it's it 
you once you never had an ounce of enjoyment in your life never had ecstasy mm. in your life not the drug just the feeling of ecstasy <laughs> feeling of enjoyment that is what happens you yeah. become that yeah good point yeah. someone so unhappy with life someone who has never had even the modicum of fucking enjoyment looking every moment into a mirror saying where is it all gone seething with anger so all you can possibly do is hate other people that's all she is. She was quite nice when I met her, though. <laughs> <laughs> she was quite friendly. Yeah, that's because you're white. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm, and also not not gay. I mean, that's one of her big issues, isn't it? The the, yes. the LGBT. Oh yeah, yeah. Like she you, she, she, she they, said they recently cured, yeah. we'll find a cure for homosexuality. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, th- I think to be fair, if you're a lesbian, Anne Whittacombe <laughs> would be that cure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm reconsidering <laughs> now. If my, you're, uh, if, lifelong yeah, sexuality. At the same time, if you're a straight man and all your options was Whittacombe, but would I'd you... be hunting down another man. But, yeah, yeah, literally yeah. hunting yeah. as well. Yeah. I would be hunting. <laughs> but hunting men. Probably got a better chance of breeding with another man, to be fair. <sighs> God, oh, she's just she's. But I, I still vile. think I still think the fact that they are they have gone so crazy this Brexit party because it's kind of like UKIP. I mean UKIP set a fairly low bar by actually having a physical fist fight in the European Parliament. If you remember that, oh but yeah, I mean, that was uh, uh, um, <laughs> two guys lamping each other in the. It was Steve Wolf. Yeah, Steve, ex-leader, wasn't it? He wasn't he leader for about it, fifteen it, it minutes. Was who was it? Uh, who uh, hasn't been minutes, the leader? Yeah. It's got to a point of like, who hasn't been the leader? And they got um, quite a better squad now. And they could have Whitcomb or Farage up top. <laughs> well, no, because they've got because uh, that's that's a Brexit party in UKIP, and they're different in some way yeah. that I haven't understood yeah. yet. Well, well, well UKIP's, UKIP's become more like a kind BMP. of UKIP's become more like an alt right thing now, yes. isn't it? Like the Count Docula guy, Dankula, that's Count it. Count Dankula, it? yeah, Dankula. there's a big debate. The, the, they've put this kind of alt right Milos thing in me, Bob, or that kind of like Indianapolis. yeah, yeah, like yeah. let's legalize paedophilia, and you, just to kind of shock people, that kind of outrageous thing. Yeah, my free speech is under threat, and I've been booked on. 15 talk shows to tell you why yeah, I wish I wish to god these fuckers who keep on going on about their free speech being mm. taken away would just shut the fuck up to prove it to us well it's one of the most lucrative career moves you can make at the oh, moment certainly. isn't it say yeah. that your free speech is under threat yeah oh yeah. Christ yeah. Oh, that's, that's why I, I mean everything in me wants to turn this into fucking Ashley Hayden's political oh my god I can't say anything except yeah. everything I can fucking say you knobhead yeah. and it's, um, it's ironic because it's not they're making loads of money of it it's not free about their speech whatsoever well I think there's two slots you can have which are really open there's like the hyper woke our police every oh, single thing knobbits. you can get booked for that and then you've got a nice little niche or you can do the can't say anything these days whereas whereas if you've got the kind of like middle ground which vast majority of people are in which is like yeah you can say what you want but maybe have a bit of a think about who you're talking to and what your audience is and what your position mm. is like and that's progress and that's fine i mean i think the basic thing is it's hard to write jokes isn't it it's hard to write jokes it's always I been mean, hard to write jokes and that's what's the difficult yeah. part is it's not that you can't say anything it's say things which are funny is hard especially, yes. especially when you're laughing about disenfranchised people <laughs> well, and, yeah. and, and, but with like a career beyond like the the the, the lion's head down the road in you know in in, in coventry <laughs> i mean yeah. the, if you want to do great gig lovely people yeah no <laughs> they booked me for an open spot not not come back since um I, I was I was going on somewhere with the Whitcomb EU slavery stuff because um, news this week was that uh, uh, members of a gang behind the biggest modern day slavery uh, network oh, ever this, yeah. exposed in the UK have been jailed. So when Anne Whitcomb's going on about how British people uh, are slaves to the EU, actual modern slavery has been shown. Yeah, um, and we have a big problem with modern slavery in this country. Mm. Uh, this was uh, a Polish gang from, uh, I say, two uh, Polish crime families bringing over vulnerable uh, people, the most vulnerable in their society, the homeless uh, ex uh, forces, vulnerable women, bringing them over to the UK to work and farming their uh, wages, keeping them into uh, uh, squalors, making them live in uh, rat infested squalors, and then getting them work in the menial jobs mm. and um, then every paycheck going to the um, bank account, which they set up with the uh, slaves. Yeah, they frog them, them, anyway. yeah. frog-march into the bank to yeah, set up the bank account. Pure control. Yeah. 
and then just farmed, leaving them on about £20 a week to live on. Yeah. Um, they got uh, between, uh, it was, because five people have been done and uh, have been sentenced and three more awaiting sentencing, including one that did a runner, uh, which is always fun. But I, I mean, thi- you would, in fairness. Yeah, <laughs> if you had the opportunity and you're there, because it's, it's something between like five months and 17 years. Yeah. They got the entire network collapsed, but this was from uh, 2015 when it started, when two victims escaped and told the charity uh, Hope for Justice in 2015. The court case has been going on for a few years now, but of course, because of our correct laws in this uh, country, you can't. Uh, the uh, newspapers were unable to report on it, Yeah. Um, which is one of the reasons uh, Tommy Robinson in prison. Because um, we have rules over our trials. Yes, we do. Although those rules are, pl- uh, are, are political correctness gone mad. Um, yeah. Yes. Appar- um, apparently. I've read. I've see, read. now, how would we look at uh, stopping? Because this gang made uh, uh, estimated £2 million pounds, uh, between uh, 2012 and 2017. 92 victims confirmed but could be as high as 400. Yeah. Now, in the world, there is a suggestion that we have 40 million plus people in modern slavery, including things like forced marriages, yep. uh, 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 forced labour, and all of this. In this country, the estimates are between, I think it's, uh, the government has said between 10 and 13,000, but... Uh, Every other charity and everyone else suggests it's going to be much, much higher. Now, we already have some rules in place. The uh, Modern Slavery Act came in 2015. Uh, Which is a bit late, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) Uh, And this was Theresa May's big thing, wasn't it, in 2016 when she became uh, PM? She 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 really cares about this one. I mean, she's done. (laughs) Fuck all. But she cares. Cares so much about it. I really want to deal with modern slavery. What you done, Teresa? Fuck all. Good girl. Good girl. What a woman. What a woman. What a world we live in. Good God. Well, in all fairness, uh, most uh, no issues have been addressed over the last two years because of Brexit. Do you know yes. what I mean? We've actually we, we've actually managed. We, might, we we had another election, which meant for for better or worse, the Conservative Party have less of a majority, which means they can get less done. So so nothing's being done. Yes, but the Modern Slavery Act in two thousand fifteen. Uh, came in as an attempt to uh, stop this. Hmm. Uh, there's a couple of uh, th- uh, categories for companies that have to uh, uh, um, report on modern slavery. It's uh, earning more than £36 million turnover. Right. And then you have to make sure that all of your supply chain and everything else doesn't have uh, a slavery in it. What they found is that... Uh, over a third of the companies who should be reporting on the risks of modern slavery uh, haven't. So what would you be looking at? Also, of course, the government have been uh, cutting uh, funds to modern slavery units. Uh, Last year, the uh, High Court came out and said that it was illegal, uh, the cuts that they were doing to... uh, uh, It was uh, modern slavery victims... They cut funding to them because we are truly dreadful. So, how would you how would you look at solving uh, modern slavery today? I mean, w- I mean, it's a tough one because we have a system that's in place t- that that allows corporate, um, you know, sort of deniability. You know, it's it's there is there is an element of corporations sort of vetting suppliers or whatever, but. That costs money, and they want to make as much money as possible. And I don't know. I don't know what could be done. You don't. I mean, that's. It's, I mean, he's, at least you've answered. Yeah. I mean, you haven't. You haven't oh. s- solved anything, even nope. even attempted to. But yourself. Well, I think what you're going to get is if you have a tightening up of the immigration controls after after Brexit, you'll automatically have a bigger black market in labour as well. So my personal concern would be going forward that everything they're doing, when, when you talk about a points-based immigration system, which is what um, Boris Johnson is, is 
espousing at the moment and uh, which is what they have in Australia. Australia's got some of the worst records on stuff like this. Because mm. as soon as you have really strict bureaucratic credentials, which you need to satisfy, and which often need a lot of money to satisfy, the, then your black labor market just gets bigger as well. So actually the, the EU principle of freedom of movement seems to me a better basis to reduce this. So looking to extend that, because uh, freedom of movement gives the power to the worker to move around when they want. The issue which people have with it is because it puts foreign workers on the same footing as indigenous workers. But if you're gonna if you're gonna really t tackle that, I think you have to think about increased labour mobility for everybody, don't you? That's uh, what I think. It's, I mean, it's 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 certainly an idea. I mean, as I, as I suppose, like with this particular thing, this is about the vulnerability of people. Uh, yeah, they didn't. They didn't just select people well, they who could work in different places. Yeah, they put the most vulnerable mm. uh, of of uh, Polish society onto a bus, drove them over here, put them into fucking things. It's a it's a criminal aspect. One of the uh, one of the things because uh, there there was a review done uh, that uh, suggested to uh, uh, introduce sanctions to companies that don't comply with the legislation. Mm. That makes sense. You know, fines and disqualifying directors, certainly. Also, and this is this is one of the things that remind me just how fucking retarded every everyone in government is, because one of the review recommendations is to scrap the provision uh, in the legislation that permits a company to comply with the legislation by saying we've taken no steps to tackle modern slavery. So you can comply. By saying we've done nothing, mate. Yeah, and that's fine. How, how can you possibly allow? Who wrote that in? Who wrote that into the legislation to say right? We're going to tackle modern slavery. All these companies, these big companies that uh, have thirty-six million uh, pounds or more turnover, have to have to report on modern slavery look at their supply chains make sure everything's fine okay that sounds good will we put anything in also if they just write we've done nothing that's fucking fine is it not and wasn't as a few, i remember a few years ago there was a whole thing about um if you have to report on uh, a worker if you think they're not in the country incorrectly on their own behest yeah. so so the, the so the government there is Hostile environments. Well, it's just, it's just like yeah. slaves are fine, but somebody who's come over here on their own volition to start their own life, we want to get, we want to kick them out, we want to, we want to imprison them, we want to take away their wages. But, but yeah, we, I mean, the difficult. We're happy for, we're happy for companies to turn a blind eye to slavery, but not to. Uh, but is it, isn't it also an issue in terms of international supply chains as well? Well, no, because like, this is all done in the. This so is all. Uh, is this is this all slaves this is the in UK? So the Modern Slavery Act can only really help you with the thirteen thousand or so UK. Yeah, but if we, I mean, but if we start uh, with stopping the thirteen thousand odd uh, or more uh, slaves in this country, then we can be we can show a way of going for the rest of the world forward. That's that's the only way that a country can truly uh, uh, help things progress by solving an issue in their country and saying this has a potential to be able to be uh, 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 extrapolated or whatever the other one is the the minor thing the the shrunken thing yes it's, it's a word for it uh, to your country that's that's the way forward so if we solve it here we're not going to solve. Uh, our ideas in uh, 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 Middle Eastern or African, like Qatar, we're not going to fucking uh, solve with ourselves. Forced marriage is one of the biggest. You've got like something like 15 million people uh, or women who are in uh, fucking women, girls mm. who are in forced marriage. That is modern slavery. Yes. We've got modern slavery, but us solving uh, the modern slavery in this country isn't going to do anything but about what, that. What about the Qatar World Cup? Because there was discussion that we'd boycott the World Cup last year, wasn't it? Yeah, we're not going to boycott the World Cup. I know, but but what I'm saying is the human rights abuses actually in creating that World Cup are probably more severe than the ones people were talking about. They've literally built stadiums with slave labour over there. Yes, but I mean, there's there's two things you have to understand about the Qatar World Cup. Uh, one of them that is going to be very interesting, the Qatar World Cup, because when uh, a free kick is called, 
building a wall will be like five foot it will be massively high like 10 15 foot because of all the dead people you can use to build it um also at the end of uh the um at the end when they're all doing all of the awards and everything the um in memorandum is going to last about four days just uh, let's let's remember all of the dead. Four days later, <laughs> just a lot of well, probably, a, lot, a lot of John Doe's. John Doe, John Doe, John Doe, John Doe. The John Doe trophy. But you know that every every, every country's got a different name for John Doe. Like, yes, like, yes. In yes. Israel, he's called Israel Israeli. And, <laughs> and, and really? The, yeah, yeah. Israel, like John. I mean, Doe. that is. I mean, but but it's going to be like Indian, basically. That sounds like it? an Whatever old the Indian equivalent of John Doe. Uh, is. Like, that that uh, sounds like a Bangladeshi. Yeah, Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi probably. Yeah. Yeah, that or sounds Sri like Lankan a very or. old, like a, an eighties blonde joke. That <laughs> 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 really does. That's uh, Isra- Israel, uh, Israel, Israeli. Yeah, and in uh, in uh, German. Germany is Otto Normalverbraucher. What does that translate? Uh, uh, Otto, the average consumer. <laughs> 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 There's a list on Wikipedia. But I, I love the idea. <laughs> if you die and you don't identify, people go pre-average. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the norm, shops at H yeah. and M. Uh, yeah. Average, average like everyone it. else who <laughs> we don't know the name of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, whatever the Bangladeshi <laughs> equivalent is, uh, you know. I, I do like that. that yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> again, it's quite going quite on neutral, with the it? carrying on with the modern slavery. Uh, as, and I've got a, a lot of stuff on how awful everything is because that's that's my remit. Is it not an international thing? Like you were alluding to it, like um, like it, like you say, there's a supply chain network, and like the more the more restrictive and and and, and harsh our immigration controls are, the more black market's going to grow. Mm. I mean, I, I had an idea just now. I, I, I maybe we can maybe we can implement it. I don't know. Um, why don't we join like an organization set primarily in Europe that has links to the rest of the world as an intelligence and, and economic sharing thing? And uh, it would be really good because we could communicate with countries like Poland yeah. uh, quite easily, share yeah. information, and, and wouldn't that be good? Imagine yeah, but that hasn't worked. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's not working now because it's, there's, there's forces which are pulling it apart, and, and it's vulnerable right now. The EU is incredibly vulnerable right now. And, oh, no, it's not. No. Well, it, it is in terms of our standing. I, I mean, yeah, but crim- in crimin- terms of our standing, our standing is fucking but crim- sweet now. But criminals, criminals will target us because they know that we and we have a lot of grey areas in our diplomatic lines of communication. Yeah. London, where, let's say Germany yeah, but, does not have. Yeah, we also got to say like London is already the uh, money laundering capital. Yep. of the world yes you may as well call us fucking smeg for the amount of uh, stuff we wash yeah and the money we wash and there's probably a few houses in this block that have been used Scotland, for the money uh, um, I mean this one would be if uh, I had any money um, <laughs> uh, I, would, I would fucking launder money good god yes any, anything to uh, actually afford things that would be delightful um, but uh, also Scotland with the uh, uh, SLPs the Scottish Limited uh, uh, companies, that is a hotbed for uh, uh, offshore and money laundering. Um, our, our country, we've, we've set ourselves up to be uh, uh, an illegal tax haven. Yes, that's exactly what Yeah, that's doing. exactly what, what we've done. But surely, I mean, there's no, there's no way breaks... It's, it's kind of weird that we've already got that, but the Brexit has the, this disaster capitalist element as well because well, we're already kind of there aren't we well yes. there's, there's always there money to be made in, in in sort of change and disasters you know and that's where the vultures will circle here yeah because they can see what's happened well old reese mogg's got his um well, yeah. equity yeah, how much money do you, there was a report that came out how much money he's made since brexit yeah, you know? but people still listen to him and go oh wow well uh, boris johnson uh this week has endorsed a report calling for a singapore style tax-free port at bristol and this is six weeks after they received, after he received a twenty-five thousand pound donation from the uh, British port company, uh, and the report, of course, specifically has proposed Bristol as one of the six candidates for the port. What to be Singapore? Oh no, a, a Singapore-style yeah. uh, attack. Because uh, basically, what the, I mean, do you, uh, I'll explain it anyway. Uh, uh, a tax port or a. Uh, 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 a style, yeah, a tax-free port or zone is exactly what it sounds like. It is a, uh, say a port, say Bristol, would end up basically looking like um, uh, 
uh, outside the jurisdiction of the country, this would be everything that comes in okay. to Bristol be tax free. Okay. And uh, then uh, companies are able to do one of two things: either uh, move the tax to somewhere else. Right. Uh, so they bring something into uh, the UK and they send it out to somewhere. So it comes into Bristol, pay no tax on bringing it in. Send it out somewhere, pay tax there. Okay. Or they can mix, they can miss the tax altogether by uh, bringing uh, something into uh, the uh, this tax haven, as it is, uh, and build whatever their their product is in the tax haven. Okay. And then export that out, so they've got no tax to pay on it. Okay. Um, now, uh, Boris Johnson has, uh, as I say, he's he's endorsed a report that said that we should do this. Um, after getting a donation by uh, people who would uh, seemingly reap the benefits uh, from it, um, well, which I'm is so good. Because uh, Hunt has also uh, received uh, donations from another port. Um, he is from the first corporate shipping uh, donated 25k to Hunt campaign. Although Hunt has said that he would uh, certainly consider it if he was a PM. He hasn't endorsed it. Right, okay. Um, and this is going on to where we were talking about uh, uh, previously. Now, would it be... A good idea to do something like this? Um, no. There is an argument that, uh, of course, people like Boris and Hunt always use that we can't do this because we're in the EU. Apart from, uh, there is currently 82 free ports over 21 EU countries at oh, the that's moment. Interesting. Uh, so, I mean, we are the only country who seemingly can't do anything that the rest of the EU can do. Uh, but that's that's besides the point. Are we are we for or against the idea of a uh, a tax free port? Well, ideologically, it sounds abhorrent, but I like the idea of Bristol becoming sort of like a sort of like a like a Tatooine kind of place, like sort of like people. Welcome to Bristol. But it'll be it'll be it'll be, it'll be, it'll be like drum and bass, no, in Bristol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It'll be amazing. laughs> we need some Bristol a bit like that, anyway. <laughs> So it, it would be Not like an it would be like an attached jersey, like jersey if it was actually yeah. attached to the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, jerseys are a strange, a strange place. Yeah, my girlfriend place. went there recently. She said it's yeah. abhorrent. It's horrible. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. But it's just yeah. full of like. But they've also got poor people in Jersey. They as do. Well. They do they've have like a quarter. They of have, no, they have people really who are poor. trapped there. Yeah. They have sort of like econ- not e- I guess slaves would be too strong, but they're sort of economically trapped there. If you're not in the yeah, financial because it's services really it's really expensive you, to fly and, yeah, out there. Yeah. I like housing's really expensive there. Um, like um, she was visiting her friend who is a you know who's female uh, and in her twenties. So obviously the only accommodation she could get was house shares with sleazy men. You know, uh, mm. you know, and it's just got kind of a wild west out there in terms of sort of economic and social rights and. And Bristol is very much the opposite of that. So oh, Singa- Singapore have uh, a history of not only quite severe poverty, uh, but also a big um, inequality. Yeah, they have. They, they have for most you economies, but, but they have. A, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, they have. They sort of like. You know, they have some of the poorest. You know, if you're yeah. you're either in or you're not, and it's, it's. But what I also understand about Singapore is that they have this very like dirigist state capitalism thing as well, don't they? Like the Chinese, like they plan economically twenty, thirty years, so they do have like really powerful state. Because I think when these Tories think about talk about Singapore, what they mean is there's no rules anymore, there's no taxes. But actually, what Singapore is is a place without any real natural resources, which is just going. We need to educate our workforce to be able to do this. Yeah, democracy is an inconvenience to our to our economic development. You but, know. but I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, it's almost preferable to what we have. What we have now, we have a Tory party who who don't seem to like democracy, even though they're involved in it. Mm. But they don't have an alternative plan either. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they have this master plan. That will sort us out economically. I mean, I, least, wouldn't, you know? I, I wouldn't suggest it was just Tories. Oh no, no. I no. don't see the I don't see the leading lights coming from anywhere, really. Well, in terms of democracy, in t- yeah, in terms of uh, fighting for good, I don't I don't trust any of them. Well, I mean, I mean, you get a lot of we we're, we're going going forward back to sort of talking about like sort of internet debates. You get a lot of uh, insinuations that 
you know, you see a lot of things like um, we need to destroy the Labour or, you know, good, the Tories are going to... And actually, when you, that's the opposite of a healthy democracy. If, if you believe in democracy, you believe in a stability to some degree. That means you've got to lose some elections, you know. You, uh, I know. I know in America, until very recently... Uh, th there was a lot of people who would who would vote alternately because they believed that you know y you can't have people one party in power for twenty five years, uh, which is yeah they have the phrase down the ticket and they straight yeah. ticket yes. and the idea is you'd split your ticket so you'd have even though you like might even be like a registered Democrat or Republican you'd vote for like your state attorney general mm. to be a Republican because you just like the guy who you think a change is needed or whatever. Yeah. So there's that tradition and that's getting... I mean, I think my thing, my take on that kind of uh, free port idea yeah. is um, it doesn't sound very Lexit, does it? And there are people kind of still sticking to this Lexit idea. And I, my, my Everybody who sticks to Lexit is a fucking uh, idiot. At this stage... I would I'd probably agree with you, but I'd also say like what? Because I'm not what, sorry, Lexit. What what you mean London? A, a left a, a left wing Brexit. Oh okay. no, because that would be uh, Loxit. Loxit. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's Lock 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 Yeah, I mean it would be some. It would be some fucking hellscape. I haven't heard of this because in, well, in, in Scotland it's called independence. Yeah, you know? well, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean it's there's. I mean I'm sure there's people who voted for independence and voted for Brexit as well. Uh, yes, there's there's there's, yeah. there's a part there's a part of the left which is very pro Brexit and it keeps going. But for me, when I hear stuff like that, it's like yeah, maybe like a free port is something you can consider in this. But these are the ideas which really thrive in Brexit. They are right wing ideas. They are. It is a shift to your country, so you're you are no longer in um, a, a group with others. You are competing against mm. them, and that means the only thing you can really do is bring your standards below theirs you're not it's not attractive to put your standards higher than theirs you've got to be you've got to define yourself by that your rules are more flexible there's more loopholes and there's more p potential you, yeah, for you dirty can money. make more money you can make more money with us so, and so that sort of race I, for social, yeah it could be so race e economic darwinism and i just and i, mean, I, and, let's, and let's I just the rules up as i just as think possible. that that is more in this i think on paper theoretically you could probably summon up an argument for alexa but just the spirit of the thing. The spirit of the thing is this kind of race to the bottom stuff. I, I think I think the left wing has been. We 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 we. we, we if I if I call myself left wing anymore, I'm, I'm you know it changes daily. But we're pushed back to to really tiny arguments, and we're not even winning those. You know what I mean? We're we're such on the back foot, if you were. You know, for example, like uh, a couple of weeks ago, you see in the states when we were discussing the children kept in cages. Yes. And they were discussing what the definition of safe and sanitary was. Yeah. And there was uh, there was a, a sort of a lawyer who was arguing that was it toothpaste uh, and sort of like daily cleaning every day it was not necessary every day to meet the definition of safe and sanitary. And when you're down to that as an argument, you're pushed so far back. We're going, yeah, but let's give the children in cages something to clean themselves with oh no that's economically bad yeah. and therefore not giving us the advantage over china that we need you know like, when, like they're, the they're not concentration camps because everyone has adhd yeah um, exactly yeah that's fucking argument <laughs> exactly um, right yeah exactly although in fairness i'm pretty sure the german concentration camps were well organized do you know what i mean so yeah but i mean this, this this is the problem with the, the whole uh, uh, concentration camp thing we only think of something like fucking uh, Auschwitz or um, who's the other big one? Begin with D. Or uh, Dachau. Yeah, Dachau. Yeah. Dachau wasn't a concentration camp. Prison. It was a prison labor camp. Uh, yeah, it, no, was no, first, no, it was no, the first. No, because the definition one. of uh, the concentration one. camp uh, is not. Uh, it's not just, just yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not fucking. Uh, just, I thought it's just Auschwitz. No. Yeah, but da da um, Dachau was a forced labour camp. There are many history. Uh, many history professors who have uh, had to fucking come out and explain to people what concentration camps are. We did concentration camps during the Boer War. Yeah. Um. I think you can. You can even go back. Yeah, but concentration camps aren't uh, just a small definition. Uh, the a concentration camp is the same as like a, a fucking. It's a definition of a country. Uh, it's. It doesn't matter the size of it. It doesn't matter what you think. 
like this is a country, this is a country, this is a country. Doesn't matter the size or everything. The, mm. the concentration camps are forcing people into a place. Right. Whether you get them working or well, not is besides what the What I mean is Dachau was an extermination camp because yeah. they sent people on from Dachau. Well, to it, was, yeah, it, w- it may not have been an extermination camp, yeah. but it still was a concentration camp. You still were, it still was yeah. something that was uh, put in place to put uh, the undesirables into a place. Well, it, was, it was the first one, the Nazis, the first one the Nazis opened Dachau, 33. Oh. They opened it about two weeks after they came to power. So it was the original. Well, yeah, and also there was a slow build, wasn't it? It was yeah. like, it was, like, uh, it was, it yeah. was um, and that's the dangerous thing you get into because you get to a point of like, what is the ultimate end game? Where are you yeah. inevitably going to end up when you start going, hey, let's pe- put people in camps? Because yeah. originally they didn't really have the idea to exterminate them, but then they just thought, well, we want them away from our cities and we don't want them going away and telling people about it, so we'll put them in a camp. But then they're like, oh, it costs quite a lot of money to keep you in camps, you know? What can we do then? Well, we can get rid of them. And that's and America's got there pretty quickly. In well, terms yeah. of like, uh, let's just stop feeding them and give them... Well, China, China have, especially in uh, Xinjiang, they have uh, uh, a, a multitude that they're calling re-education camps. Uh, uh, and then other people are calling them detention camps. The problem is when you say concentration camp, people go, oh, no, no, this is just... This is just a fucking thing. It's the same when you say uh, uh, fascism. If you call someone fascist, they go, "I'm not goose stepping." Like, that's that's not what fascism I, is. I'm alt right. Yeah, yeah, which basically means I went to Oxford University. Well, we got but another, we got, we got another one of these. If I can drop another complicated thing, is that the only reason, w- the only thing we understand about anti-Semitism in this country is the Nazis. But there's a long, long tradition of left-wing anti-Semitism oh, as well. Tons. Like this yeah. in uh, in Poland in the 80s, uh, they had a they basically had a pogrom and and blamed the undermining of communism on the Jews. You know, so you've literally got you've you've got the Jews being used as a scapegoat in all these left. All right, I've 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 always said about the Jews. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me, I'm waiting for this one. Let actually. me I'm waiting for this one. <laughs> let me. It's the Fura bunker. <laughs> let me. <laughs> the Fura hour. Get out a shot. Actually, Get out a shot. <laughs> Allow me to finish this sentence before I'm not being paid. Before actually, you so start I'm not fucking <laughs> chucking me into all right, oh, all right. suffering. <laughs> The Jews are not God's <laughs> chosen people. The Jews are God's cannon fodder. That's not anti-Semitic. That is just history's no, it's, fact. It's, it's, it's philo-Semitic, in fairness, because it shows sympathy with the with the Jewish people, really, doesn't yeah. it? It's, it's well. Yeah. This, this is the fact that oh, we've got to show, uh, mate. I, I hate to break it to you, God's just not that into you. If history well, says anything. God does not like the Jews. He does work in mysterious ways. I mean, ways, very I'll, mysterious. I'll, I'll, for I'll, Jews, yeah. they're getting like two, <laughs> two mysterious. The play God, this 500, is 500,000 year long game. <laughs> oh, I need to get it now. Come no, on, this God. is the thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> Pull your socks. Muslims <laughs> and Christians, they're God's cannons. They are just murderous, kill everyone, kill everything. Jews mm. have killed a lot of people in time, of course, but they're nothing. They are. Pussies compared to the fucking other two. So what we're trying to numbers, say is Jews we? need to kill more people. That's all yeah. you're saying. To make people like them more. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure about this logic. It's what the Christians have I mean, done, to be fair. I yeah. didn't like Personally. the Jews, but when they murdered my family, <laughs> just like the Christians used to, I got really into them. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's. I mean, Israel are trying their fucking best. They really are well, trying their best. Well, we're making up for lost time over there, aren't we? <laughs> well, we're I mean... Really and when I say Israel, I of course mean the government, not the people. That's yeah. how that's how you yeah, uh, exactly. that's how you deal with Israel. Exactly. Well, you I, go, I well, the government, uh, mass murdering, psychopathic, right wing nutters. Totally, they, totally. they need to be accepted by the international community. Give them a break. <laughs> <laughs> but how, it, are we gonna, right, how are we going to people going to talk to us at the UN? Let's just murder people. All right, in you come, guys. So, no, no, the UN. This is something that I've always uh, uh, had an issue slight with uh, the UN Security Council. Is that for years um, uh, the UN Security Council has on the, has had on their agenda. Israel always, always, yeah. always, 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 and that's something that Israel uh, made a point of. Like, well, why always us? Argument, of course, is you you keep on doing the bad, um, mm. but they didn't look at uh, the majority of other um, issues that were going on around the world. It was always well, uh, this 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 month we've got uh, Israel and Iran. Next month we've got uh, Israel and. Uh, Sudan, 
Next month, we've got Israel and fucking uh, Syria. It's always Israel and someone else. It was always Israel, Israel, Israel. Argument is, all of that time, they did absolutely fuck all, because any time that uh, the UN Security Council wanted to do anything about Israel, the, U- the US would always veto it. Forgive my ignorance, but didn't the UN award the land to the Israeli Jews in the first place? Uh, in the, forma- no, the formation was... of Israel, the, the, it was a UN resolution which... Which in ni- no, the was, state was of the UN about in 1940? Yeah, 47 is exactly yeah? when it's formed. Yeah, it's right yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. Well, right then the, at the EU have a lot of fucking things. The UN was, is definitely deeply involved in the creation yeah, but, of but it was, well, it was, was, it was, it was always, it's, it's always back. played both sides because it was also deeply yeah. involved in, you know, for example, the whole of the Middle East was, 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 was colonized by, it was still colonized by European powers before the, yeah. before the mm. war. So, I mean, for example, in, in Saudi Arabia, what we have there is uh, we have rulers that we in effect put in place yeah. when we left so we sort of we sort yeah. of backed some people and we and we, we forgot to buy the oil from them in 1934 and we thought oh that was a mistake but if you know if we get in with them maybe they'll keep giving us some deals and so you know so we, we so as a western I don't know, Western democracy in whatever form it is has always played both sides against each other, Israel and the Middle East, you know? Yeah, it's we're really involved in Israel with the Balfour Declaration as well and the, yeah. the promise which the British government made to, to the Jews. Would, would we well, I have British government promise. <laughs> do, do you consider... We're, 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 we're followed through yeah. on that Do one. you consider a uh, two-state solution the only solution? Um, do I consider two-state... I consider that I live... I'm from Nottingham and my, a lot of my family are Jewish. But I have very little direct experience of Israel. And when I went there and I, I sat in a bar in, Is- in Jerusalem and I had a beer with an Israeli and Palestinian who were good mates and good friends, as a lot of Israelis and Palestinians are. They, they hang out, they live in the same tiny space with each other. And I raised a glass and I said, to peace. And I've never got such a good laugh from two people because they, they are just so deep in a conflict which has cost them on a human level, a lot for a very long time. Yes. So I am in favour of any solution which allows them to work that out in a way which is, which allows people to move on. And the fact, the example of Northern Ireland shows that this can be possible for a select period for, of time. For a select yeah. period, <laughs> until yeah. the and British until, government yeah. comes and fucks it up again. Until someone comes up and goes, ah, yeah. don't worry, you know, I, I've yeah. got, I've got a solution to this incredibly important, uh, just uh, complicated backstop. We're not going to deal with it. Yeah. That's it. That's I mean, I think, I think, I think the thing about the t- the two state solution is, and I, I do see this probably more from a kind of Jewish perspective because I'm so hooked up in that community, is that a lot of Jews will say, up in that yeah, uh, we, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of Jews, a I lot. I walk down, I walk down, uh, uh, I walk down Tottenham. And just, I know I'm all, mate. I know I'm, I'm so hooked up, mate. I'm so hooked up. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> lots of Jews in my life. But but they will say that when we relied on the international community for help in the 40s, they didn't come through. So we basically need our own country, walls and guns. And that is the mentality you will have to deal with with a lot of Jews to get them to willingly give up the idea of a, a Jewish only or a Jewish foremost country. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm the same. I, I, let's say I, I don't think we're going to solve it here. No, no. Um, no. It'd be great if right, we, we got, well, It's we all going to be desert in like 20 years anyway. Uninhabitable desert. So. Oh, I mean, if they keep on bombing it, it will be. Um, uh, have we got uh, any final points? Yeah, I wanted to mention another story if we've got time. Uh, not a lot, so quick. Uh, I think that we should mention the protests in Hong Kong. Because yes. Uh, yes. I, I think it's a, an inspiring story because they're getting so many millions. Or, or of a small place, they've probably got a million. And while um, Anne Widdicombe was making her speech about slavery, the protests in Hong Kong were raising the Union Jack flag as a symbol of freedom. So I thought that was a nice little ironic contrast that you've got kind of fake slavery yeah. being spoken about in uh, in uh, the European Parliament by a British person who is being oppressed by being offered free coffee and nibbles. And then you've actually got people for whom the Union Jack is a symbol, well, the Union flag is a symbol of freedom. And I yeah. thought that was an interesting little... Ironically, quite a lot of people in the Union Jack <laughs> <laughs> don't don't feel that way. Uh, exactly. Yeah, as, somebody exactly. Who, as somebody who lives in uh, in Scotland. Three people are known to have killed themselves over in Hong Kong, uh, with yeah. two leaving messages in support for the protesters uh, with regards to this. 
who have uh, China continuing to tighten its control over Hong Kong, which has been going on for about twenty odd years. Yeah, it has. I mean, extradition bill. In all fairness, yeah. well, I mean, it's all about the extradition bill that yeah. uh, I spoke about on this a uh, couple of weeks ago. I think it was. Mm. Um, how about yourself? Any final points? Uh, uh, we didn't solve anything. No, uh, I mean, uh, um, I, I don't think I brought uh, any if solutions if we, to if the we, table. To be if fair, we, if we were going to solve everything, more people would have watched it. Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, actually, you make a valid point. Watch it. It's going to be a weird mix if we do this in just like hardcore policy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you have anything to plug? Um, I I have an Edinburgh show, but yeah, come to that. It's uh, it's not. Have a when and where? Uh, it's at a place called Fifty Two Canoes, which is a cocktail bar uh, where I run a gig. And uh, come to that. It's cool. It's, it's Are you in the uh, brochure? Yeah, we're in the brochure. Yeah, well, I'm running a venue this year. So oh, I'm running a venue. So yeah, so basically, in, in uh, if you if you come to Edinburgh, I run a, a a comedy show called on Tuesday and Thursday. It's it's the only open mic in uh, Scotland for comedy, but it's actually an open mic, not like in London where we get audience in and like proper professionals come down, like award winning comedians come down for five minutes. Newbies begin, and, and we have a great time, and we get very drunk most Tuesdays and Thursdays cool. because bars are open longer in Edinburgh. Uh, but we we decided to take to we did a deal. Uh, they were uh, with PBH before, and now they they dropped. They didn't want to be with them, and we said, "Hey, can we take you on? C- can we run you a fringe venue?" So we've we've programmed a show, um, programmed a program of uh, of Edinburgh-based comedians. Um, so it's uh, it's an entire venue with Edinburgh-based acts doing their shows. So that's 26th and 27th of July, which I think is a Thursday and a Friday. And the same show, which is called The Palace of Earthly Delights. It is a comedy show, storytelling show, is coming to the Camden Fringe in August 19th and 20th, which I think is a Monday and a Tuesday. Fantastic. Uh, Final piece of news that uh, didn't get through. Uh, Home office officials have sparked outrage by stating that trafficked women from Nigeria... Uh, can return to their country um, uh, of their birth, wealthy from prostitution and held in high regard. Uh, now they are rewriting that guidance after realising it's fucking mental. Um, Linton uh, Crosby, who's a cunt, um, uh, who in the past has run uh, the political uh, 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 campaign for the Tory party, did Zach Goldsmith's racist party, uh, racist run for the uh, London mayor and for Boris Johnson's thing as well. Uh, it turns out that, uh, what's he been doing? Boris Johnson, did, uh... oh yeah, he's he's over in uh, Australia, has been running a campaign lobbying uh, in Australia uh, on behalf of major uh, flavoured with uh, milk, uh, milk, drinks uh, with sugar that contain more sugar than coke and this also comes at the same time that boris has been saying that he's going to look at uh um st- uh, reversing the sin tax so he's doing that because linton cosby has told him if he wishes to sue me to suggest that it isn't the reason let him uh boris johnson has also that's the uh, singapore stuff uh hunt has received money from uh uh, the UK's special representation, uh, uh, special representative to Bin Salam, who is a Saudi crown prince. They're all getting money from awful people. Uh, Downing Street has uh, indicated it could order an inquiry into the anonymous leak that uh, Corbyn is mentally and physically frail. Because uh, really, we need impartiality with our uh, civil service. Over in China as well, in uh, the city... Uh, Jinan, I think I've pronounced that badly, um, has released a notice uh, banning uncivilised behaviour, including taking off shoes in public, spitting, littering and queue jumping. Uh, And Hong Kong protests, Cliff Richards doesn't want to be known as a paedophile anymore. Uh, That's a piece of news from this week. There's more into it, but we don't have time. And people are suing governments for climate. So that's about it. Uh, and don't drink. 
uh, that's what the thing. New report has said that one in ten people uh, in hospital beds in the UK are alcohol dependent, and one in five are harming themselves with drinking. Um, so if you are going to drink yourself to death, please make sure that the NHS aren't involved um, to save money for everyone. Uh, I want to thank my guests. Thank you. Thank uh, you. That's it. Uh, goodbye. Done.